Welcome to this edition of Smart Levers. Today we are going to talk about culture stories. So, are we going to be talking about Amar Chitrakatha stories today? <laughs> we can because they are great examples of culture stories. And and for those of you not familiar with them, they are these comic books about Indian mythology, culture, history. That irrespective of what you think about them, you cannot deny the fact that many generations of Indians have actually. Uh, acquired a knowledge about their past through uh, those kinds of books. So yes, uh, the Amar Chitra Katha for your organization, what does it look like? Uh, how can it have the same kind of impact that uh, these books have had is what culture stories are all about. In previous episodes, we've spoken about the importance of stories and storytelling as a medium of influence, a medium of passing wisdom down the years uh, and down through people. Because there is something about stories and there's a lot of research about how at a sort of a, a psychological and also at a biological level, we tend to just respond to stories and resonate with stories in a manner that a lot of abstract communication does not really do. And so that, therefore the idea of a culture story is quite simply anecdotes and other interesting events that illustrate your culture for what it is, for good or for bad. In some cases, it could be showing you at your best possible uh, version, living up to your values. In some cases, it could be where you, you know, forgot to live up to your values. And that is something that if you're really honest, you want to share with your employees and with the rest of the world. So quite simply, the culture story is, let's say, an anecdote that talks about your culture, reveals your culture, and which you can use, therefore, to communicate what you stand for. So we've heard of some of these great institutions, uh, the organizations which have been around for hundreds of years, like your Tata's and Birla's, they have done a great job of archiving. Udrej also, I think, has done a great job of ar archiving. They've captured some artifacts, ads published in 1920s and, and things like that. But still not a lot of these stories, right? There are books that are coming out now which are talking about stories and where they have you know, spoken to people, gleaned a lot of this information and put to, put it together in the form of stories. Some of the companies that have emerged in the last few years, they may feel that, oh, we're probably too young to be thinking about archiving and, and things like that. Isn't that for these centuries old companies? What's your take on that? Are we missing something there? Yeah, I think this is a blind spot for a lot of us. Even in everyday life, we are always a part of some story or another. Each day brings so many different moments of that could be storified, if you can say that. And this is a little bit of re-education that we need to do, an unlearning that we all need to do. That, okay, yes, you are probably not going to have a great story each day, but I'm sure every quarter, every year, with sizes of workforces that we have, there is someone who's solving a customer problem in a very interesting way, someone who has gone out of their way to help a colleague, someone who has just invented something new and has created that uh, innovation. Maybe the classic story would have you that you, he was flash of lightning struck him uh, at some point, but sometimes it is a slow cooking process. And so what happens is that because our story radar is off, we are waiting for that day when we do a $1 million story. And we forget about these uh, $100 stories that are there for the taking every day. And I, since you mentioned companies like the Tata's, I think other companies like, you know, ones like Apple who have made storytelling into a high art. Also institutions, take uh, religions, take marketing agencies. They are very clever at spotting opportunities for stories. And what we should take away from that is opportunities for stories are all around us. And if you take something like an apple, which has made even the moment of you opening a, a gift that someone has given you, which inside could be an iPhone, they have turned that into a moment that could potentially be a story someday. And so even if you're a very young company, you will have uh, the origin story of your company. How did you decide to start the company? It could be the, the first week that you spent in a company. And the same applies to individuals. Oftentimes when we get people talking about their stories, one classic template or prompt for a story is tell us a story from your first month at work. And invariably, there is a great story uh, there. And there are different stories each time. And it is amazing how a veteran of 20 years in the company 
can think about it as if it happened next year. So I, I was going to ask you about some of these examples of stories and you've already done that. So you mentioned religion, uh, right? Every religion has some kind of collection of stories which is also a way of prescribing how people should live life. What is that way of thinking that particular religion prescribes? It's not just religion. I would say it could be a sports team. It could be any institution or anyone who wants to build an institution. You will find that there are these stories which serve as templates of how to behave. There are stories of how we did this in the past. It's a learning opportunity. So that's one story packs in a lot of information. It's, it's a very information dense piece of communication told in a manner that touches your heart. And so that combination can be used for uh, learning. It can be used for influencing. It can be used as a template to how to live when you are uh, wearing that particular hat. When you step into your professional self, you adopt the ways of working in that manner. And maybe later when you are in a community and you're trying to do something, you follow the norms of the community. And so, Coming back to the professional side, too long people have forgotten that this is a way of influencing uh, people. They've left it to religion and to cults and your story of your favorite sports team and where you were that day, your favorite footballer scored five to win that grand tournament when everything seemed lost. They are bringing that same emotion and intensity to uh, what is seen as uh, a very uh, antiseptic sort of world. Uh, and stories are knocking on the doors so that you can use them to influence culture at work. Right. How should uplevelers be thinking about capturing these stories and even, you know, collating? Once you've written these stories, what do you do next? Right. So in a previous episode, we spoke about the need for a, a culture repository, which has these culture stories as an integral part of, of it. Now, if, let's say you're a leader. Let's take an organization point of view where they want to encourage this kind of culture repository and storification, the leader will have to set the ball rolling. So, for example, one-on-one -on -one meeting, you can always ask people to talk some, about something that has happened in the last one month. It's a way of building a human connection with the other person. And you can also do it in your group level interaction. We often take status updates. Why not take a story update from people? And in fact, we found this when running some of these culture diet calendars for our clients that when we get a group of people together and we have uh, an interaction with them and sometimes the, the story emerges on its own and someone is just asked to illustrate a particular cultural tenet or something that they did recently. I ask you how something that happened recently, which illustrates our approach to uh, customers and someone will come up with a great story. They may not know it's a great story. And I think for leaders, just eliciting by asking these prompted questions and remembering to ask that as part of your uh, list of agenda item is something that they should do without making it you know, overly formal, I think is the other caveat. The other part is as up levelers, if by now you are, you're sold on the idea of the importance of stories, is to do something as simple as spot that story and note it down somewhere. It doesn't even have to be a full-fledged story. It could just be a couple of lines, couple of words in a notebook, in a diary, which says that this is something that I can use to illustrate how I came up with an idea, how someone helped me, how a customer said a word of praise. All these things, I think, just getting into that habit of story note-taking is, is what they should do. I think we've covered most of what we wanted to cover, but in the context of culture stories, Raman, I've also heard you uh, use the term anti-stories. So if you can quickly talk about what are these anti-stories? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a clickbait sort of title, but the idea of the anti-story is that a story that does the opposite of uh, what the ideal story uh, does in terms of showing the positive. So often a lot of the stories that we tell, they're carefully chosen to show the company in its best possible light. Uh, if you are a, a candidate uh, in an interview and you're telling the story of your career so far, which is what your resume shows, all of it is as if you never made a mistake, you never you know, put a foot wrong. And so it sounds almost inauthentic. It's like an Instagram picture, right? It's too perfect. Uh, and so the idea of the anti-story is to also show when your organization, when your team stumbled, made a mistake. Classic example was we were helping a tech unicorn collect a bunch of stories together. And 
they were all great stories of them executing beautifully and being very respectful to each other but we felt that to balance that almost sweet taste you needed something a little bitter and so we went looking for a story where they made a mistake they didn't live up to their values uh, and we found it and fortunately it was someone who was a leader who acknowledged his mistake told uh, everyone what he learned from that process and he had actually brushed off someone in a meeting and then that person came back later and called him out on it and to his credit he took that in the positive way so that's an example of an anti story when you didn't live it live up to whatever you should have done but you learned from it and i'm sure there'll be a sequel someday where is he's redeeming himself and that same person comes and says that thank you so much for taking my feedback on that note i mean i think we've spoken about culture repository uh, and spoken about culture stories sure people would have figured how they dovetail into each other so thanks a lot thank you